we have quite a few questions coming in about squash, cucumbers, and other cucurbits that are rotting on the vine. And this picture came in on our Ask a Missouri Master Gardener Facebook page. When you can see those small zucchini squash right there, just aren't developing and just kind of rotted and fell off the vine. So what are we going to do about that? Well, first, let's talk about the fruit formation because there are several reasons your fruit might not develop on the vine. The first one is pollination. And so we know that we have male and female flowers on the squash plants, on the cucumber plants. All those cucurbits are the same. The female flowers obviously have the fruit right in the back while the male flowers just have the receptacle. The male flowers is where the pollen is and the female flowers is where the stigma is. And the goal of pollination is to get the pollen from the anthers in the male flower to the stigma in the female flowers. And on our right, we have a little pollinator critter there that's doing that for us. Uh, both flowers contain nectar, and so the bugs go from one flower to the next. We need the pollination to occur so that the seeds will develop, and that's what forms the fruit. If the pollination doesn't occur, the fruit will simply drop off the vine. Or if the pollination is very poor, we'll get a small misshapen fruit that might fall off the vine. So the first reason your fruit might fall off the vine is if poor pollination. And what contributes to poor pollination is excessively wet weather or perhaps the use of insecticides that are destroying the pollinators and we're not getting good pollination from them. So we wanna make sure we have good pollination. The second reason we might have fruit fall off is blossom end rot. And we've heard about this with tomatoes, but it also happens in cucurbits as well, squashes and, and other uh, viney plants like cucumbers, in which the end where the blossom was begins to rot. And it's a hard kind of a rot. It, it gets a little soft at first, but makes a hard crusty kind of a black area at the end of the fruit. And we're just seeing some here on the left. And here's our picture again on the right. And we see some might have that on the ones on the right as well. So that's blossom end rot. And it's the same blossom end rot that you'd see in tomatoes. And so the cause of the blossom end rot, even if you might have good pollination, your fruit might still rot if you don't have proper calcium uptake by the plant. And that can be influenced by uneven watering. If we get a lot of dry spells and then a wet spell and then dry spell, that kind of thing, or if you water, too infrequently and the plants get too dry in between waterings, that influences calcium uptake. There's another problem with that and simply not having enough calcium in the soil. So be sure to get a soil test so that you can get the calcium into the soil at the beginning of the season and avoid this. If you already have it happening, first thing to do is make sure you have even watering and then do what you can to get a good source of calcium into the soil around the roots and water it in very well. So that would be blossom end rot. It's a hard kind of rot at the blossom end of the fruit. Sometimes we see this is once we get the blossom end rot, there's a secondary fungal growth on there. The fungal growth did not cause the blossom end rot. It's a result of it. So we need to be a little vigilant before making a diagnosis. The blossom end rot, of course, is soil problems with water and calcium. The fungal growth, of course, is a fungus. And let's get into a little bit about fungal growths here on cucurbits. So here's one that we're seeing that Folks might originally think is blossom end rot, but it's Kinophora rot. And the Kinophora rot is actually a fungus, and you can see it right there on the blossom end of the fruit, and it turns the fruit mushy. Remember, the blossom end rot makes it black and hard, right? The Kinophora rot turns it mushy and soft. So the Kinophora rot is a fungus, and we can treat fungus with fungicides, but on our vegetables, there are other ways we can treat fungus. And one of the best ways is to simply make sure that the fruits or vegetables, the parts we're gonna eat there that are rotting, stay dry. So we'll want to maybe not use overhead watering, instead water with a hose or drip irrigation, to keep the fruit dry. We'd want to keep it elevated up off the ground if we can with some mulch. And some folks will even remove some of the lowest leaves on the squash plants or cucumber plants to provide good air circulation underneath and that helps keep the area dry and reduce the quinophora rot without using fungicide. Here's a great example sent in by Patrick Byers of some quinophora rot on his, and you can actually see the fungal growth on the blossom end of the fruit. Remember, the blossom end rot will not have that because it's internal and calcium dep deprivation, but the quinophora rot, you'll actually see the fungal structures on the fruit, and so you'll know the difference at that point. There are other, other rots, and this is on cucumber, it's a pythium rot. It's got the white fungal growth on it. This is from the cucumber being on the ground where it's wet. So we can alleviate that by having them up on the trellis. 
or at least putting some kind of mulch down underneath the cucumbers to keep them up off the wet soil. So not everything is blossom end rot or kinophora rot. There are other rots as well. And we'll need to keep an eye out for those as the summer goes on. There's also a pythium rot, which turns the whole fruit into mush. And you can see the white growths and growths on the pythium rot. And it's the same excess water situation. So those fungicides can work on those, but we prefer for our food crops to do some environmental augmentation with reduced water on the fruits and air ventilation. So there's our picture that was given to us. And we can see that these fruits did not develop in the first place. Really, they just kind of fell off after barely starting. We have some rodent damage on there that's been eating them as well. So we don't see fungal growth on here. And we see it started at the blossom end. So we're going to call that blossom end rot and lack of calcium in the soil on those particular zucchini right there.